All right, let's get a deeper dive into the report. New York Life Investments economist and portfolio strategist Lauren Goodwin is with us and RSM chief economist Joe Bruce Willis. Whoo, guys. So, Joe, I, I have to say you were flagging going into the report that you had seen some estimates that were starting to move up in dramatic fashion, but not that this dramatic of a fashion. Well, what the heck? OK, <laughs> let's all take a step back and breathe. January has lots of seasonal noise mm. attached to it. This report, however strong, exaggerates the true underlying pace of hiring in the economy. OK, once you start to unpack this, what you're seeing is, OK, Wage growth is high, but it's dece it's decelerating. Okay. Second, everybody out there in the market got on the wrong side of the Fed this week. This jobs report, if you really want to watch the impact on the market, look at the two-year yield. Before probably 30 minutes pass, we'll go full round trip back where we were before Powell's press conference started. Mm. All right. Second, hiring is is still strong. It's too strong. We need to generate some labor slack in this economy to ensure that we get back to 2% inflation at one point late next year or 2025. Finally, too many people are going to conflate this today and they're going to overreact. And I just think it's really important here. We get all kinds of noise every January. Every once in a while you get one of these big outliers I would take this with a grain of salt, focus on the underlying trend, and proceed accordingly. Well, Lauren, doesn't this raise, you know, just push back on this notion that I think the market priced in this week that we will get a Fed pivot? I mean, this is a very strong report. It is a very strong report. I think, actually, that the market's been on the wrong side of the Fed for a year. Um, it's, it's been time after time after time that the Fed has been, frankly, pretty consistent, especially in the last six months with its messaging on where the terminal rate is going, what they expect they'll need to do in order to bring inflation under control, and the importance of bringing inflation under control for the average household. Um, this week was no exception, and so I agree with what Joe's saying in that the, the underlying trend hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, and the cyclical rally that we've been seeing over the past couple of months, especially in January, that's been fueled by hopes for a Fed pause, as well as some international growth risks moving off the table, uh, this, this is a, a meaningful gut check um, and on at least one of those factors. If you're Fed Chair Jay Powell waking up this morning, you see this print you're putting on your slippers, what do you think to yourself about that terminal rate at the end of the day? Well, I think the terminal rate's going above 5% is what I think. The Fed pretty much told us they were going to raise rates, you know, three more times at the December forecast, right? They hiked it by 25 basis points this week. They're going to do it again in March, and they're going to do it again in May. Then maybe, maybe we can take time for a strategic pause to let the economy continue to absorb those six supersized rate hikes that happened last year. I got to tell you guys, market's wrong all of the time. The market's really out of alignment here. This actually, I think, is probably a good thing for the market over the, over the medium term. But today may be a bit painful. Well, listen, the market's out of alignment because Jay Powell put it out of alignment. And so, I mean, mm -hmm. you could say, Lauren, that he was sort of clumsy at the press conference. If indeed, you know, he, he was asked several times, are you concerned about loosening financial conditions? And he didn't really come out and say, yes, I am, which is what he had done in the past that slapped the markets down. Why do you think he wasn't more aggressive there? You know, to be honest, I think it's just because we are getting close to the point that the Fed has identified where it'll be a good idea to sit and stop and let these long and variable lags take their effect. So again, for months now, the Fed has been saying that a five to five and a half, uh, five and a quarter uh, terminal rate target range is likely to be appropriate. And that's, as, as Joe pointed out, that's a couple hikes away. Um, it's fairly typical, even as atypical as this economic cycle has been, it's fairly typical that the labor market would be the absolute last domino to fall in the, the, the trajectory of an economic cycle. We actually, we were running some data and saw, surprised me actually, that nine out of 10 of the last recession, nine out of the last 10 recessions, employment was still growing when the recession began. Right. And so this is, this is not actually so unusual. And so for Powell to say, hey, you know, we're going to hike two more times, 25 basis points each, and then it makes sense to sort of sit and, and let things play out. 
that's that's a reasonable approach. I agree, it could have been more direct about that, but the market was going was was likely to take that as dovish no matter which yes, way. Sometimes it. it hears what it wants to hear. True. You know, part of the surprise here, I think, is that for the past couple months, all we've been hearing is about layoff announcements, notably in big tech. Why did they not show up here and when do they start showing up? Okay, they're not. Okay, there's a couple things going on here. First, the median duration of unemployment going into this report was eight weeks. I haven't had a chance to see the report. People in tech have skill sets that are in demand across the entire economy. So I live in Austin, know a kid who makes 275,000 bucks. She's 27 years old. She works at Twitter. If she gets laid off, she'll find a job like that. It won't pay 275, it'll pay probably close to 200, right? They're getting jobs. Moreover, they get long severance packages. Some of them are doing contract work. These people, I mean, they're, they're, they're never sure. Even, yeah. But even, no, even, I mean, as we've talked about, even met most of, many if not most of the companies that are laying off are also still hiring. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're getting just a right sizing of the workforce. In labor, there was labor hoarding because those people are impossible to get. I mean, th these people are really in demand across the real economy. And I want to come back to something here. Powell has a remit to make policy for the real economy, not for financial markets. And everybody needs to understand that when we've had a historic inflation impulse, had a 20 month peak, and we're now seeing some disinflation, that's mostly correction in the supply chain, not disinflation because the economy's you know, gonna have a real long term problem. Yeah, I understand why there's some misalignment, but he needs to continue down this path. Financial conditions are still roughly one and a half to two standard deviations below neutral. That means it's a drag on the economy. It's not as bad as it was six months ago, right? So everybody gets on TV and says, well, financial conditions improve. Okay, no, they have not. They are tight and they need to remain there so we can restore price stability because price stability is what counts in the real economy. For consumers that, yes, many of them who are, are working yep. and are looking for that price stability as well, at the same time as they're looking to perhaps outpace some of where the prices have risen to at this point in time before those prices perhaps start to retreat or normalize once again, you know, what within the wage front here that we're seeing within this report gives them confidence that they can see wages stabilize for an extended period of time in order to weather what is still an inflation or, or at least dis inflationary starting environment? You know, uh, not a whole lot, to be honest. Real wages have been declining since April of 2021. That's why this has been already such a challenging environment for so many families. Actually, the number one question when I'm speaking with clients that I get when we start talking about recession is, aren't we in recession already? That's how it feels. And that is why some of the conversation and, and frankly, the market movement around a soft landing, I think, could be misplaced. I'm not convinced that a soft economic landing under these conditions is what makes the best economic outcome for the, for the most people because recessions, though painful, provide a really important service, which is to reduce or eliminate imbalances. Typically, in the last couple of cy cycles, it's been some sort of leverage you know, household leverage, corporate leverage. In this cycle, it's inflation. And that's why Powell's out there saying, including in this week's press conference, you know, unless we are able to bring inflation under control, the economy works for no one. And so wage growth here, persistent, that's good news, mm -hmm. but not if it's continuing to, continuing to fuel companies' need to raise prices higher. So look, the, we're just turning the corner on real wages. They're just moving into positive terrain. Consumers after that 20 month shock are just getting a chance to breathe and get ahead. You know, I just looked at the unemployment rate out to three digits, it's 3.434. That's lower than anybody's lifetime who's in this room right now. I mean, this is, this is extraordinary stuff that's happening. Um, I wanna circle back to the beginning when we were talking about January. Yeah. yeah. Because I want to do a little impromptu Yahoo no. you. <laughs> why, just break it down for us in simplest terms. Why is January weird? And what, like, they changed the populate, they changed the denominator, right? In, sure. in January. Talk to me about what's happening. It's real simple. People quit jobs, hiring gets reset, wages get reset. It's very difficult to estimate. So every this, January. Every January. So the seasonals are really, really important here, which is why, yeah, the labor market's too strong, but it's not that strong. 
right? What I'm really more interested in is that labor force participation rate, the 3.4% uh, unemployment rate. And hey, guys, look at the household. Remember a couple months ago, all the sharks in the market were like, this isn't true. Look at the household. We almost had 900,000 increase in household unemployment. That's statistically significant, and that's huge. Lauren, um, what do we do with all of this information? What action do we take from here for the people who are looking ahead at 2023 and they want to make money and hopefully make back some of the money they lost last year? Well, look, I think that this this is likely to, to put a tactical hit on what has been otherwise a, a risk on cyclical rally. Again, not only because the market is getting a line of sight on the Fed's terminal rate, but also because we've seen some important global risks at least pause for now, including the energy environment in Europe, China's economic reopening, et cetera. Um, for investors, that can be really tactical. Um, yeah, you know, the next couple of days are likely to be a little choppy after this data, but the, some of those um, positives for the economy still stand. Most investors aren't able to be so tactical. And as uh, the way that the, the economic evidence is stacking, it's very clear that we are going to see slowing economic growth and continuing deterioration in margins over the course of this year. So we're actually leveraging the strength in markets recently as an opportunity to rebalance towards themes that are a little more durable, um, focused on income generating in, in the market, and just an acknowledgement that as, as certain as Joe and I and anybody can, can come up here and sound, this is an, econ an economy with a large confidence interval. It's just such an uncertain environment. And so why leave up to chance and market timing what you can generate in a portfolio via income and, and a little more durability? Joe, what do you think we might hear from various Fed officials in coming weeks when they hit that speaking circuit? Oh, you're going to hear them reinforce what Powell attempted to, to, to put forward, which is the rates are going to increase. We may take a pause at one point, but that doesn't mean we're necessarily finished. Mm -hmm. They need to finish the job here, Brian. I mean, if they're going to get, if they're going to reestablish price stability, they absolutely have to err on the side of caution, even if that means the Fed causes a, a, a downturn in the economy for a brief period of time that's quite mild. And Lauren, it looked like you, I wanted to add something you know, after that. And I just want to add this on to it. If you're looking at this print, what, what is the first trade that you make after you read this report? Well, the, the first thing that, I, the, the thing that I was going to add to what Joe's saying is that, um, as you were discussing earlier, this, the, it might appear that this job report makes the Fed's job harder. I think it actually makes their messaging a lot easier, a lot more straightforward. It makes, it makes the market's job harder. Mm. And so, again, if you're able to be incredibly tactical today, this is a, this is a moment for, um, it, it, again, a, a, a cycle back into the improvement in value equity over growth. Um, in investment grade credit over high yield, et cetera. But um, tactical isn't for everybody. So the, that, the medium long-term focus we think makes sense. I think all of our jobs just got a lot harder today. That much of the story. <laughs> New, York Life, uh, New York Life Investments Economist and Portfolio Strategist Lauren Goodwin and RSM Chief Economist Joe Basuelos. Good to see you both. Thanks so much for the insight. Thanks, Tremendous. Thank you.